All right, so I just cleaned off my mating surface here. I use a razor. Uh, you know, after I took the gasket off, whatever stuff is a razor, make sure the razor is clean. Uh, a new razor, and um, run your uh, your fingernail across the edge of the razor. You know, let's say this is the edge of the razor here. Run your fingernail across it. So make sure you don't feel any uh, any nicks, because those nicks will scratch your uh, you know your uh, your mating surface. So um, so that's how you check. Okay. So here's my uh, engine case. So sorry about the uh, low angle. My uh, my gimbal kind of took a crap on me. So so I have to use a something without you know without the um, without the um, you have to use a tripod without the gimbal. So it's a lot lower. Um, all right, so let's look at this thing. I need to take off the spinner here. So I have the impact driver here. The impact driver. Take off uh, all my sides here. See, so you see how it stopped? Let's check that again. I leave my trigger here squeezed. Let's look at it. So you can see my trigger here is squeezed, but it stops. See that? That's because this this new uh, Makita, they have this feature right here. That actually, uh, when it, when the nuts loose, it will actually automatically stop. On the old type, it just keeps on spinning, so so the nut or the or the bolt will just fling out, so you lose it. So that's kind of cool. That's cool if you are really like that. So that's definitely cool. Okay. Now the, then the, if you hit it a second time, then it'll go all the way out because you know it doesn't feel any 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 stoppage anymore after that. I have to squeeze it twice. This is fine. Well, you know what it is? Because there's, there's st still a little bit of resistance um, on here. But I like the part that it stops. It stops on its own and you don't have to stop it. Okay, some people we, we use this gasket here I have a another one so I'm gonna discard that one that old one Just gonna, so your surface here is gonna be a little bit dirty wipe that off uh, so the last time I did this was uh, you know, I was trying to take this off but I didn't have the right tools and I actually cleaned off the uh, the, the, the spinner filter here so let's see how much accumulated and that was about what 200 miles ago it was back at 600 plus miles, and now there's a, um, you know, now it's 850 miles. So, uh, so let's look at it. Um, so you can see it. It's not that dirty. Just a little bit of a buildup. You see the, you know, the dark material there. That's the buildup right there. That's the clutch material. So it's not that, you know, not that much, not that much crap. Not compared to the first time when I took this off. Um, first time was definitely a lot of crap. Um, so, so I think because of how much volume there is in here, I think you could probably go like ten thousand miles before you need to take this off and clean it out. Maybe even more than that. Uh, possibly even more than that. Um, so you don't, you know, you don't need to do this often. Some people are like, oh, you know, do it every time you do the oil change. No, you don't need to do that. Same thing with the oil filter screen. You don't need to change it all the time. So, so I, I, what I recommend is, you know, doing this when while you take this off. You know, you do this and and the oil screen at the same time. I would say, you know, ten thousand miles is more than. I think it's more than sufficient. Uh, as far as cleaning this off goes. Okay, so got that going. So let's look at this. This is what the, I had the problem last time. So last time I ordered this little tool here. Uh, no, this thing is made in made in China. I got this from Hard Racing, and uh, this is the problem I had last time. So let's look at let's stick this in. So it fits in. So the 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 socket in here is a. Uh, see, you can see that. So that socket drive right there. That is a half inch drive. All right. Let's stick it in there. It fits on the spline. If you actually look look through in here. 
you see that uh, this the spindle here goes which do most of the most of that's that's uh, half inch drive that's only about maybe four millimeters maybe five millimeters at the most of uh, of space and uh, and my uh, my extension that went in here it wouldn't you know it wouldn't uh, um, it wasn't able to to have a positive engagement so it actually started to spin and slip on the uh, you know it actually started to uh, slip on the on the drive here so if you look at the drive here you'd see that top right side of the uh, drive how it's kind of rounded right that's 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 my extension rounding it out so you can you see that side too the top left side now um, rounding out so so this tool didn't work for me so actually I had to order another tool from uh, from uh, we bike out of Japan so basically this thing wasn't deep enough it's too short and I have one of these you know I have one of these uh, for my CRF 50 but the thing is the CRF 50 this spline in here it's not a half inch drive it's a 3 8 and the 3 8 hole is not big enough to clear the spindle so that didn't work either right, so I basically I had to order or the one that did, did work. And what I ordered was uh, where did that tool go? There it is. So I ordered this right here, Mini Moto from We Bike. So if you're curious, you know what it is. Here it is. Uh, here's the front side, so you can see the uh, the part number and everything. So you, you know, so when you go to We Bike, you can find find the same one. So this is the Mini Moto brand, yeah, Mini Moto. And that's the part number, I think. And this is right there, Grom, Grom uh, MSX, right? So look at this. I haven't even, obviously, it's still brand new, so I haven't even taken it off to double check to make sure it fits. Um, so let's see. I'm pretty sure it will, because just looking from the outside, I can tell it does. It will fit. So you see, you see here it's a lot deeper than the previous one. See that? So that's what's going to give me my my uh, my reach. And uh, looking in this drive here, it's actually a, it's not even a half inch drive. It's actually a three three eighths drive. Uh, so it wouldn't clear the spindle. You know, if it, if it wasn't if it wasn't deep enough. So now it's all the way in. And looking in there, you can actually see how the spindle clears that three three eighths drive. So I could use this now. Right, so this will work. So I just need to put an extension on here because my uh, my you know my my socket drive is not gonna fit on here. So uh, <clears throat> I need an extension. So there's several ways of doing this. Taking this off, and I mentioned in my other previous video that you know there's several ways of taking this this nut off. There's nut in here. There's several way of taking this nut off. You know with this tool. So one way is to uh, stick this on here and have an impact driver. And the impact driver will just it'll come right off. You don't need anything else. Um, if you don't have an impact driver, what you do is you could use a uh, a holding tool like like this right here. Right, this holding tool here. They have these little pins on the end here. That little pin could actually go into uh, the holes here, like so. You know, like so, that could hold it still, and it won't move. And that, and and this way, you don't have to use the impact driver. You could just use a regular wrench, right? Regular three eighths wrench, and take this off. So that might be a good idea, because the impact driver is harder than everything, you know. And these little tabs here, you see these little tabs. You know, over time, the impact driver will basically destroy these little tabs because they're, you know, they're not that big, they're not that strong. Uh, other thing you could do and what, what I did I mean what I got and I showed you before is I got this little oops cool <laughs> almost dropped it in the, in the oil so I got this little thing right here uh, from B-Bike and it's basically it, it, it sits into this gear here see how the, the, the drive gear and the driven gear over here uh, where it is it sits into this gear here and it wedges those two together, so that way, that way, um, 
That way it doesn't spin. Oh shoot, let me put this camera down. And... It's always awkward doing it, things with one hand. Okay, so watch this in like so. Let me show you that. See that? So watch this in like so, so that way the two gears were locked together and it, you know, and it doesn't spin on you. So you could do it that way as well. So, you know, more than one way to skin a cat, right? But since I have an impact driver, I'm probably going to try my impact driver. Um, actually, no, I might not because I don't have an impact extension. So my impact driver here, you know, the impact driver here, ugh, this, this right here is not going to reach. It's not going to reach far enough. So, uh, so I, I don't have an impact extension. I have a regular extension, and I don't want to use my regular extension. You know, I don't want to use the regular extension because this thing is, is you know, the impact extension is, is different. It's more hardened, so basically, it could, it, it's made to to take the impact. If you use a regular extension, you could you know damage your extension, uh, wear it out faster. So I'm not gonna I'm actually not gonna use the impact driver at all. Then I'm actually gonna use um, use my my wrench. So let's do it that way. Let's use my, my regular socket wrench. Uh, since I'm using the socket wrench, I have to hold I have to hold this uh, this spindle or this oil spinner weight here. This basically this uh, this it's kind of like a flywheel almost. It acts like a flywheel. I have to hold that still. So uh, I can use my gear in the back, or I can use my uh, my uh, this little tool. So using this little tool, I have to basically use you know one hand on the on the wrench and one hand on this thing. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm gonna just going to use that little you know uh, stopper gear that I got. I'm gonna use this thing. So that way I could put both hands on my wrench, and that way it'll be easier uh, easier for me, less less likely to slip. Basically, my hand will be less likely to to, to slip on the um, on the wrench and and not round everything. You know, not not round anything off. Okay, so the gear's in there. It's engaged on both sides. I'm good there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you guys can see that at that angle. So I'm engaged there. Everything should be good. Just need to step over here so I get more uh, leverage. Hopefully this is... This wrench I have is enough leverage. Oh my god. Ooh, that's tight. Okay, this little wrench I have is not, uh, it's a little short. I need to get a wrench that's actually longer um, to give me more leverage. So, yeah, so this one is just a regular, you know, regular 3 8 drive socket. I'm gonna get one that's a little bit longer so I could actually uh, have more leverage. Um, so that was kind of, kind of hard. I'm not sure what. With the torque setting on this is, I I, I'm, I need to double check that when I get the um, you know when I look through the uh, when I put it back together I, I'm gonna look through the um, the service manual because I have that uh, as well. Let me move some of my stuff out of the way. Oh, this crap sitting here all in the way. You know when you have a lot of shit in the way, you can't do any work very well because everything's in the way, right? So, um, yeah, let me grab another wrench and uh, let's see. Alright, so I got two wrenches. I have, I have a Let's uh, look at my, let's compare my wrenches. Let's compare my wrenches. So I have the one I, I just tried, which is this one here. And I have my other ones. It's about an inch longer. And I have my uh, my breaker bar one, which is about an inch longer than that. Um, so I think I'm gonna try the breaker bar one. It gives me more leverage, so it's a little bit easier for me. Um, let's do it that way.
So it's a good idea that I that, that I use that that gear to lock up these two. Because the uh, one hand's gonna be on the bottom here, bottom of the wrench. And the other hand I'm gonna keep at the corner at the corner here. So that way this thing doesn't get cocked eyed on me and it, and, and it doesn't strip. It doesn't, you know, this tool here doesn't doesn't you know it doesn't get cocked eyed and it could get damaged and get stripped. Oh my god, that's tight. Oh my god. Okay, let's try a different uh, different angle. So I was trying to lift up. Let me try to push down. So going from this direction, it's lifting up. If I go from this direction, it up push down. Oh shit, felt it budge, I felt it budge, so that's good. Uh, whew. Man, that's tight. That's really tight, that felt like it was freaking probably 80 foot pounds or something like that. It felt like a, tight like a lug nut. Cause you know, this thing, this, even though this is a breaker bar, it's not very long. So you don't actually don't have that much leverage. So tightness wise, it felt like it was like 80 foot pounds. Very similar to a lug nut on a on a car. Okay, so that's off or loosen, I should say. So that's your uh, your you know your nut right there, like so. All right, and after that, you have the little washer here. Uh, I think the washer is directional. But I can't remember. Let's pull it out and let's look at it real fast. No, it doesn't say anything. So this flat washer right there. Nope, doesn't say anything. So it's pretty flat. I'm gonna look at this right here. So I pulled out this this direction, like so, like so. I'm gonna look at the orientation of it. So you see how it's, this this washer has actually been sheared. It, be, it was stamped. So on the right side, it's nice and smooth and clean. So that's the side that was uh, towards the top of the shear, and the um, and the left side is, is more rough, so that's the bottom side. So when I put this later on, when I put this back, I'm gonna put it back in the same direction like that. You know, like this, instead of flipping it around this way. It should be like that, okay? How's that? Uh, well, this thing should just slide right off, because there's a spline on here. Be mindful, there's a little bit of oil there. So make sure you have your oil oil pan. Let me move my oil pan a little bit right here. So if I trip oil, it just drops in there. Uh, okay, like so. Oops, trips in oil. And this thing is actually two. No, it's almost one piece. Thought it was two pieces. Okay, now this thing is pretty heavy. No, it acts like a uh, as a. Uh, uh, flywheel. So there's my there's some crud in there. You can see that. That's about 200 miles right there. And there's still some metallic. I still see some metallic. So there's still some breaking. You know, probably it's probably aluminum. And all the black dark stuff. That's um, that's the clutch material. Okay. So let's put that aside. Drips out on the side, so that's pretty heavy. So a lot of people use uh, end up getting a uh, like a Kitako or Takagawa clutch cover, and and for those clutch cover, they actually have a, a, a actual real filter, and the filter they use is the same filter that that's used in the uh, in the CB three hundred, you know the CB R three hundred or or CB three hundred F CB three hundred R. And that's that's the same oil filter, but the bad thing about that is that when you use that, you're replacing this thing, and basically you take this off. So when you take this off, you're losing you're losing all this mass. So basically your engine is gonna be less torquey. It does spin up a little faster, but you definitely feel that it has it has less torque, and uh, that's gonna um, that's gonna you know maybe for race use it might be okay, but for street use you won't you know you're not gonna like it. You're gonna have less torque, and, and when you're climbing a hill or whatever, um, you're gonna be like, man, this kind of sucks. Okay, 
So that's removed. I'm gonna leave my gear on here. Actually, I could take it off if I want. So let's, let's take that off. This gear right here moves. Um, let's look at it real quick. This right here moves. All right. So I'm gonna leave. I'm leaving that there. There's no reason for me to take this off. But it moves. It slides. All right. Uh, and this little, uh, you know, uh, it's a uh, what is it called? It's a uh, the Woodruff, Woodruff key, I believe. Uh, right in there, the little slot you see on top. So I need to take off the clutch basket. Uh, so let's let's do another video on that.